We're still at the main hospital in Gaza City, Al Shifa Hospital, and uh, we actually have Professor Mads Gilbert, who is a solidarity worker and as well as a doctor, who have witnessed a number of uh, Israeli uh, crimes against Palestinians and also aggressions, whether in Palestine or Lebanon. Uh, Professor uh, Mads Gilbert, would you please tell us more about the types of injuries you are dealing with and uh, how many of those, uh, if we can say, are children and women? So far, the Israeli attacks has caused 1,231 injuries, and one of them is lying here. It's a young man who has lost both legs as a result of the Israeli merciless bombing of Gaza. In addition, there are 165 killed within those few days, and 60 of those killed are children and women. So there is absolutely no doubt that the Israeli attacks on Gaza is hitting the civilian population, women and children, and it is a collective, collective punishment which is against international law. You were here last uh, two, two years ago in the last aggression on Gaza and even before that you said also that you were even in Lebanon. Uh, we've heard that the types of injuries are more like the ones that were in Lebanon in 2006 uh, and here we're talking about the dime bombs. So can you just tell us more about the use of unconventional weapons in Gaza and as we know they're internationally banned. Can you just give us more details about this please? I'm not a weapon expert, I'm a medical doctor, so uh, I will leave the, the detailed discussion on the weapons to the experts, but there is no doubt that Israel is using extremely advanced warfare uh, heads, warheads from the drones and from the F-16 fighters, and these types of weapons are probably the ones that are made to be used in densely populated areas. Uh, the dime weapons, the spike weapons and so on, they cause terrible uh, injuries to those who are close to the explosion. In addition, the Israelis this time have taken down whole buildings, family homes, and killed whole families, like yesterday when they killed a family of 18 family members, which of course also is not only inhuman, but it is uh, a crime against humanity, and it is totally against uh, international law. Shifa Hospital is managing well. Despite seven years of siege, they, they lack everything. I've just written a report for the UN about the situation in the hospital. They lack disposables, drugs, IV fluids, sutures, everything you need to run a hospital, energy, water, and even payment for the staff. But still the Palestinian doctors and nurses and cleaners come to work. They risk their lives to serve their people. And I think my most uh, strong impression is of course of the families who have their injured and it's also of the Samud of the Palestinian people, their resilience and their uh, dignity in this extremely difficult situation. I have nothing but admiration and I hope that the good people in the world can stand up and say enough is enough now. The people in Gaza have suffered enough, they have been under siege for seven years and again, once again, they are being bombed by one of the strongest military powers in the world. And you can ask yourself, if the Palestinians had killed 60 Israelis, women and children, in a few days, what would the world have said then? This is apartheid, this is uh, not uh, just for the Palestinian people and they are fenced in, they can fly nowhere, they don't have uh, protective measures like early warning systems, they don't have uh, uh, a good civil defense, and they don't have shelters. So they are basically totally exposed to the Israeli war machine, which is hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting, and not allowing the population to fly out to somewhere else, to a neighboring uh, country, to get away from the, from the bombing. They are totally uh, uh, helpless when it comes to avoiding the bombs. But still, they don't give up, they stand tall, and uh, we are here to support them. Uh, well, if we're talking about the types of injuries that the Shifa Hospital has been receiving, we heard Dr. Ashraf al Khadr stating that there are a lot of burns and uh, the upper part of the body has, has been targeted continuously. So can you please shed, us, uh, shed uh, some light on the types of injuries? The type of injuries are, are war injuries. There are amputations and dismembering of, of the body and burns, uh, which are quite typical in, in, in warfare. And every time there is an Israeli attack, uh, everybody suspects that they are testing out some new weapons. Um, I am a medical doctor and a scientist, and I don't have the proof. But uh, I think it is uh, a, a reasonable suspicion 
that the Israeli army is testing new weaponry uh, on the population in, in, in Gaza. We have published on the different types of weaponry. Uh, we think that the dime weapons have been used extensively. Uh, if they are using new types of weapons now, we don't know yet. But we have seen some horrible injuries where people are completely cut apart with no shrapnels. So uh, it remains to be seen what type of weapons these are. But the main point is that this is a civilian population of 1.7 million people where the average age, age is 17.6 years. It's a child population which is in a big prison which is called Gaza. This is what the Israelis are bombing. So as a doctor, my, my, my first and, and foremost appeal to the world is stop the bombing. Uh, our last question uh, to you. How is Ashifa Hospital dealing with the huge shortage or the severe shortage of equipment and medical uh, supplies as well as medications? How are you doing it now, especially that uh, it was announced a high level of emergency in the Ashifa Hospital and other hosp hospitals as well, and number of medical uh, centers were closed as well after being threatened uh, of, tar of being targeted. And we also know that Israel has targeted a number of areas around hospitals, such as the Wafa Hospital, for example. I, I need you to tell us uh, to comment on Israeli and the Israeli attacks against doctors and hospitals, as well as the the way doctors are dealing with the shortages in the hospitals. Actually, Shifa Hospital decided to stop all planned surgery on the 17th of June. Then they cancelled everything, you know, like cold cases, uh, cancer patients, and so on, precisely due to lack of uh, disposables, drugs, and material and and, and spare parts. On the 3rd of uh, July, they also decided to cancel all emergency surgery that was not life-saving. This was the situation before this last attack. And still they managed to, uh, to really care for this large new influx of injured and uh, severely injured patients. And um, I think uh, the way they cope is a typical Palestinian way. It is. Uh, Samud, it is uh, their strength to be resilient, to not give up. They improvise. They have made two new ICUs in ordinary uh, uh, rooms for the, for, the, for the sick people. They, uh, they come to work even if they are not getting paid. They work enormous shifts. So it is not the foreign doctors who are the heroes here. The heroes are the Palestinian health workers and they deserve the deepest respect for their courage and their morale in, in standing with their people. Thank you so much, Professor Mads. It's an honor having you here in Gaza. You're very welcome.